So for the next two, two and a half hours, we'll be discussing post-tensioning method for the slab on grade design. Now, effectively, before I get too far down the road, this is um, almost entirely for residential construction, uh, houses, condominiums, townhouses, apartments, stuff like that. Uh, if you're looking for structural map foundations to support you know, a subterranean structure with hydrostatic pressure, uh, I'm sorry, but this is not that webinar. Uh, this is primarily for the PTI method which again is more uh, basically geared for light residential construction uh, for residential families, obviously apartments, stuff like that. But it can be used from industrial uses, which I'll get into a little bit, for, but for the vast majority of the practice of this methodology, it is for uh, residential construction. Uh, if any of this uh, webinar is interesting to you, you want to extend your knowledge on the slabs on ground design. There's a chapter in our book, uh, Postage and Concrete Principles and Practice, which is currently in the third edition. Uh, there's one or two chapters, I believe, specifically geared towards slab on ground design, uh, the numerics, but also uh, kind of the rules and uh, rules of thumb and the do's and do, uh, do not in the design practice and also in the construction. So if there are interested, uh, please feel free to pick up the book from SK Goshen Associates. So what we're going to talk about now is primarily focused on the design of post-tension slabs on ground. You can see the third edition of the PTI manual. Uh, PTI, if you're not familiar with that term, it's Post-Tensioning Institute, and they are um, at this point in time uh, like a subsection of ACI. And PTI, many, many years ago, which I'll get into the history a little bit later on, kind of um, developed this methodology for using post-tensioning in highly expansive or compressible soils. And they've kind of run with this and have taken it on as their own you know, baby for a number of years now. Uh, the one thing uh, I'll repeat this numerous times is that the design of these foundations, if you are using the PTI method, does not apply to ACI. The ACI 318 code has nothing to do, keyword nothing, with slabs on ground. This document is in itself its own code. Um, I think the residential code references this document back in the 97 UBC. Um, the actual methodology was part in the code itself, and that has been subsequently eliminated. So effectively, if you're looking for ACI code references, or if you have a plan checker that comes back and he says, or he or she says, oh, you didn't, but you you missed this section of ACI, it you know, completely does not apply. It's its own entity, and uh, it's you know, you know interesting in itself, but again, that's, that uh, screws a lot of people up sometimes in looking for ACI code references. As I mentioned previously, the typical application is for single-family residential construction, which can be a you know, one-story house, two-story house. It could be four and five stories of a multifamily residential, which typically, at least in my neck of the woods on the West Coast, are apartments, condominiums, stuff like that. Anything that's primarily a bearing wall system. Now, having said that, you can use it for post-construction, uh, post-meaning columns, but primarily it is a bearing wall, which is primarily a wood frame or metal stud frame construction. That's your basic, you know, the, the, the template of what this is made for. Uh, it can be used for commercial and residential buildings. Uh, a lot of times commercial and retail buildings, uh, excuse me, not residential, but retail, are wood framing. You have bearing walls, go for it. Uh, that can be used. If you're using primarily a whole bunch of steel columns, let's, let's say with roof trusses that span, you know, 65 feet or plus or minus more, uh, may not be the exact best application. But for, you know, smaller wood frame construction it can be used in these applications i've used it for tilt ups as well because it's similar bearing wall construction uh, it is also used for what's called super flat industrial floors so if you're looking at you know a rolling piece of equipment let's say that has a very very small tolerance for vibrations or fluctuations of its um, you know on its vertical elevation uh, they've used post tensioning a whole bunch of laser screeds and stuff like that to give you really really flat floors and it's also been used uh, a lot of in a lot of places for recreational slabs, meaning basketball courts, tennis courts, uh, you know, roller hockey stuff like that. So uh, the, the main premise here is not so much those are building applications because those really don't support any load. But the premise is if you can make it very flat, obviously, if you're trying to you know work on your backhand, you don't want a big warp in the floor trying to you know changes the trajectory of the ball or you know breaking an ankle while going for a layup kind of thing. Um, so the crack control benefit. And then also with the flatness of the system has led to post-tensioning used in these type of applications very frequently. Now, for the most of, like I said, the 99, well, I shouldn't say 99, but 90% of the applications are going to look something like this. This is a single-family residential construction. 
you know, three bedroom house, you know, and this could be obviously anywhere in the US. And basically what you're gonna have is effectively a five inch uh, post inch and slab on grade. And hopefully you can see that there are various locations. You have these ribs or footings that go, you know, both orthogonal directions. They're about plus or minus 12 feet on center. Uh, the one thing is those tendons do not extend into those ribs. The ribs are there to increase the section modulus and the moment of inertia. So you get obviously flexural strength and deflection control, but the PT does not typically, typically does not go into those ribs. You're basically putting the, the tendons themselves um, for pre-compression only. You're not trying to balance load. You're not trying to offset moments that you would in elevated construction. You're just squeezing the concrete um, in, you know, in the general sense.